You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for August 30th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance Headquarters, where, according to a single unconfirmed anonymous source, the professional left of Drip Class and Blue Gal is the number one podcast in America. <laughs> you know, Blue Gal, <laughs> we probably shouldn't speculate about this on the air because, as of yet, it's unconfirmed. But if true, this news could be game changing. I'm just saying. Game changer. Lord. No, Lawrence. No, Lawrence, Lawrence. Not Lord Lawrence. Yeah. This is a crazy Hi there. week. Hi there. Hi there. Um, we probably don't want to shackle uh, our listeners with, with our, our uh, personal travails and adventures this week, but it's been a really long week. I'm living half an hour at a time right now. Yeah. Just yeah, I, because kids and school starting for Junior Dude and... Yep. School started last Monday for the other two, and so everyone's schedule is kablooey. And right. and they're all under one roof now. Everyone's under one right roof now, for, for another mm-hmm. three days. They're under one roof, which is wonderful. Which it is, is wonderful. wonderful. It's it wonderful. is wonderful. Everybody's kind of running around, mm-hmm. getting things done, and wanting to, see, to see each other. And you know, go to games, and oh yeah, right. And but it is just. 30 minutes at a time, which is right. good because when they were little and I was a single mom, it was 23 seconds at a time. Yeah. Yeah. I just <laughs> so wake things up. Have gotten better. <laughs> I wake up every 30 minutes at night going, who do I have to pick up at the airport? Oh, nobody. <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm good. I'm good. Never mind. Never mind. There was a there was a year or two there mm-hmm. where it was nonstop Uber kids around. Yes. Just yes, constant ride here, ride there, ride to school, ride back, ride around. Yeah. And uh that's now that uh, middle child has purchased her own car yes. with her own money, yes. um, which, you know, I have to co-sign everything, but yes. she's been very uh, diligent about I'm making money and saving it and not spending it and making they, sure. Yeah. They were very poor tippers too. So I, I never <laughs> made a dime off of them, which really you kind never of. Did. You never did. They never tipped the driver in they any never way. Gave, I never got a dinner, honey. I never yeah. got a dinner. They did. They, they, they said by drifty. Mm-hmm. In their own way. So, uh, well, and last night, this is what wild times are like here. We had uh, a dinner, first dinner we had around the table where everyone was there, and then we did a, a jigsaw puzzle. We we, <laughs> we worked on a jigsaw puzzle for a while, which yeah, with all the screens so... off was a lot of fun. I recommend that. Yeah, don't find some windows screen open, screen free activity. It was it was yeah. so much like I could imagine me doing with my, this with my grandparents. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was a, it was a depression depression era. I hate to say that because uh-huh. that sounds, you know, go, hearkening back to a simpler time, yeah. which we all need to do. So, mm-hmm. and the mailman came right up the stairs, or the guy doing delivery, and just like looked in the window and said hi and hi, and we. It was just very small town, mm-hmm. long ago, mm-hmm. not actually as it really was, but sort of as as people imagined it was, and it was just a break, a break from a completely insane, incredibly otherwise depressing week full of mad men shouting at each other and doing terrible things, which is what we're going to talk about for the bulk of this right, podcast. But right, because I, I really want to start with Brett Stevens. You mean Brett Bug? I, I did love, my favorite response to this whole story was mm-hmm. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who said, my friends rag on me worse than what you got, Brett Stevens. Yeah, yeah. And it for was. you to take you know, a person who chose you <laughs> to call uh-huh. a bed bug as a joke, uh, yeah. I believe, picked you at random from the conservative columnist at the New York Times. I really don't think he was yeah. picking on Brett Stevens. No. And uh, Brett Stevens, New York Times columnist, decided to write this guy's boss right, and complain. Right as boss. And this is not the first time that Brett Stevens has just lost his shit mm-hmm. over someone saying something mean about him on the Internet. A little backstory is this this guy who wrote this, this professor who wrote this, wrote it as a metaphor for a nuisance that you just can't get mm-hmm. rid of. Mm-hmm. 
And of course, the ultimate rebuke was that this guy is a better writer than Brett Stevens by heads and shoulders. So Brett Stevens is famous, famous for A, losing his shit when anyone criticizes him at all, and B, going on college campuses and lecturing students about freedom of speech and about being snowflakes right. and having safe spaces and how, you know, if you can't tolerate a difference of opinion in a classroom, come on, grow up, people. Yeah. This is the same guy who not just didn't just lose his shit on Twitter. Over one mean tweet. One. Over one mean tweet <laughs> with like nine retweets. This is not a guy who is writing for um, Foreign Affairs magazine. Yeah. This is just some guy. This is just some guy. This could be you or me, Blue Gal. Um, and he took time out. Then, of, Brett Stevens took time out of his busy day to look up busy. this guy's profile, send yeah. an angry email to him, carbon copying his employer. His employer trying to get him fired. Yeah. And he said, Basically "Oh, that wasn't to my get... intention." But yeah, but, Fuck yeah, you. yeah. And and when I think about women, women of color, uh -huh. people of color, liberals, members of Congress who are Democrats, yes, have to deal with. On social mm -hmm. media, a, a, a related story, again, AOC blocked eight people on Twitter, yes. eight of the 5.2 million Hundreds people of who follow her. Yeah. She blocked uh -huh. eight, not because mm -hmm. they, she disagrees with them. And she gets mm -hmm. criticized by a uh, university media center for right. in, stifling debate. Oh, that's Columbia University. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Columbia University for, you know, maybe you should, uh, you don't understand what the free press yeah. or, or First right. Amendment means. Right. Actually, no, apparently you don't understand what. To her credit and to their credit, they're working together now mm -hmm. to yeah. come up with some guidelines that say, okay, because you can't just leave it like to the person to, who has yeah. only blocked eight people out of 5.2 million to make a judgment call as to whether it's abuse or not, uh, to have some guidelines for social media for elected officials, which I don't have a problem with that, but no. it became a thing <laughs> that she blocked it eight people it did. Uh, because she's an elected official. It, it makes no sense if you simply look at Brett Stevens, Brett Bug, as some kind of principled individual who believes a certain thing and then when that thing is violated, then he gets offended. That is not how Brett Bug or Matthew Dowd <laughs> or James Comey or any of these guys. That's not how they operate. The, in these guys' cases, I, I truly believe they have an absolutely aristocratic point of view, mm. which is the rules simply do not apply to me. I see. I'm above it. I'm better than everyone. And Brett Stevens really carries himself off like that. He yes, is an he absolutely yeah. privileged His nose is in the asshole. Air. Yep. He has always been a, a, a yep. privileged asshole and a shitty writer. He was a privileged, shitty writer at the Wall Street Journal. He's a privileged, shitty conservative writer at the New York Times. And he will go on being a privileged, shitty writer for the rest of his life. And I'm sure the the managing editors and the owners of America's great newspapers will continue to hire him because I don't know why slightly before this happened or uh, just about the same time, Brett Bug was invited on meet the press <laughs> because why wouldn't he? This is a closed eco media ecosystem. It's a circle jerk where all the same people scratch each other's backs because they're all covered with Brett bugs, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so Chuck Todd, in the, and I wouldn't mention this except it was perfect. It really is the perfect full, going full Chuck Todd moment. Chuck Todd invites Brett Stevens on to meet the press to ask him what he thinks about one of two quotes, one from conservative crackpot Andrew Sullivan and another from conservative crackpot Eric Erickson. What do you think about, about these two quotes from two conservatives, Brett Stevens? It was like a Mad Libs. How many conservative asshole names can I drop in one fucking paragraph? Because I have a quota and we're getting through to the end of the month and, and old Chuck Todd's going to make his numbers. So uh, can I cram in Andrew Sullivan? The guy from Americans for Prosperity, Eric Erickson, and Brett Stevens in one paragraph. Yes, you did, Chuck. Yes, you get to keep your job because you you made it under the wire. So way to go, Chuck. But it is like, for my money, like a longitudinal study of why the media is broken, of how, exactly how the media is broken. Because you do have a lot of gifted people uh, coming and going from the blogging world and from sort of the fringe media that we sort of occupy making really salient, interesting, vital, important, fascinating comments on how shitty the media is. And the media doesn't care. 
They don't respond. They don't fire people. They don't hold, they don't discipline anyone. They'll, they, there's this concerted effort underway currently being spearheaded lately by Michael Smirkanish, who shouldn't have a job in the media to get Mark Halpern back, yep. he's, you know, he's in the rotation on Sirius XM. Yeah. yeah. So there is clearly a concerted directive from way high up in the media ecosystem that certain people are just going to get anything they want all the time. And it, and the fact that there are shitty writers and their opinions are terrible and they're always wrong doesn't enter into the equation at all. So I see blogging almost as a parallel track of like, <laughs> I hate to say it, but like the, the Josephus documenting the sack of Jerusalem. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We're not going to stop the Romans from sacking Jerusalem. That's the cities will fall. That's, that's, that's the story, but we can document what's happening, observe and report. And uh, we'd really like it not to happen, but there is clearly no interest in the media to get better because the minute there's an audience, they will find a way to put Chuck Todd in front of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's talk about some good news. What has happened in Illinois? We talked a little bit about this yeah. last week, but there was a big, big news story this week about the end of the legislative session uh, yeah. in Illinois and how mm -hmm. a Democratic governor and a Democratic legislature passed and signed into law 591 pieces of legislation. They vetoed seven and sent one back with an amendatory veto to fix later. Mm -hmm. Included in all of that, and that, you know, you can just tout that number and getting things done and it can all nope. be crap, but it we're gonna read all of them. No, we're not going to read, read all of them, them but nope. we're going to highlight. No. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. Senate Bill 162 expands health insurance coverage for mammograms and breast screenings. Senate Bill 1236 prevents double dipping for elected officials between their pensions and a current job. Uh, Illinois will now have a dementia coordinator to oversee all programs and policies related to Alzheimer's treatment. Uh, Senate Bill 1641 requires the state to identify and flag college students who qualify for SNAP benefits and also advertise uh, qualifications for SNAP benefits on uh, colleges, campuses statewide. House Bill 465 will regulate businesses that act as middlemen and control what public and private insurance plans pay pharmacies. And this is particularly uh, helpful to independent pharmacies who don't have huge uh, buys. They they were getting screwed in Illinois um, yeah. by oh, these middlemen. Yeah, this will bring prices down. Yeah, it's going to bring this prices This is not down. Medicare for all. This, you know, that's federal. Yep. But this is a lot of a lot of good stuff is happening at the state level. Right. A lot right. of Right. Corporations that are headquartered in Illinois will have to disclose the racial, ethnic, and gender diversity of their boards. Mm -hmm. Finally, a new law focuses on high maternal death rates and racial disparities. Pregnancy-related complications kill more women in the United States than any other developed country. Uh, and as many people know, U.S. African-American mothers die at three to four times the rate of white mothers. J.B. Pritzker has signed a package of maternity rights bills that, among other things, forces hospitals to collect more and better data on maternal mortality, be better equipped to treat pregnant women, and mandate proper staff training in terms of racial bias. And mm -hmm. uh, having to report on that to the governor is a very big deal. That uh, we we learned from Obamacare. Yeah, we did. That when hospitals sure have did. to report return rates, readmission rates, that... They mm -hmm. change their behavior in they order do. to uh, reduce those readmission rates. They keep people in the hospital longer to reduce readmission rates. If you're having well, to report things, it makes things better. The health insurance system should be taken out of the marketplace entirely. Right. It just shouldn't be a, a, a commodity. It shouldn't be something that, that is in the uh, profit and loss universe. However, using market um, incentives to incentivize, which is a word I hate very much, but I can't think of a better one at the moment, um, hospitals to do a better job at whole patient care, to reward them when they do really good and to punish them when they screw up and, and re have to readmit someone because they did a half-assed job three times in a row, is a very good way to um, change behaviors. Right. You know, your good behavior will be rewarded. Your, your poor behavior will not be rewarded or be punished. I think that's entirely appropriate. And you can do that inside of a Medicare for all or a single payer system or a um, government option system. You can do all those things 
reg- doing what government does best, doing regulation, putting in place the guardrails around the marketplace and forcing businesses inside the marketplace to play by certain rules. I wonder if some of the resistance, and there isn't too much resistance, it's much less resistance than the media would like you to believe in terms of Medicare for all. Uh, uh-huh. But I'm wondering if some of the resistance to that isn't, uh, you know, poor people will have met, will have access to medicine the same way I do. Yeah. And uh, that's unacceptable, that there has to be class well, consciousness with even among people who actually would benefit from Medicare for all. Uh, yes. You don't want those people to have it because then I have to wait in line behind those people. And I should never have right. to do that. Right. Brett bug, Brett bug, the Brett bug <laughs> mentality. And, and also, I don't want to show up in my doctor's <laughs> office waiting room with a bunch of hobos. Right. Hobos will come invade. Which is, you know, very class conscious. It's I don't yeah. want to be around poor people. I don't want right. poor people getting my stuff. Yeah. And yeah. sorry, dude. Welcome that's to America. Why, that's why there's white flight communities, right? Mm-hmm. All right. If I mention the words Joe and Walsh together, are you going to go yeah. off for 35 minutes? No. Nah. <laughs> no. Nah. Unless we have 35 minutes to kill, in which case we I don't. can do it very easily. We don't. Um, <laughs> um, no, this is, this is the week when Joe Walsh really did test the seaworthiness, sort of the Plimsoll line, that's the line below which if you push a boat, it sinks. Um, of the, uh, of the Never, the never Trump, yeah. The Never Trump yeah. uh, lifeboat system. Um, and I, he is running, I think I mentioned, my, mentioned this last week, he's running as racism Goldilocks. <laughs> Explain um, that to me. Racism Goldilocks is, okay, all right, here's the deal. Um, uh, Donald Trump is too flamboyantly racist for some fraction of the GOP base because they feel bad in their tum-tums that he's just a racist braying asshole all the time. So they feel bad about that. They want their tax cuts. They're racist anyway, but they don't like how loud he is about it and how, how again, flamboyant he is. But Bill Weld isn't nearly racist enough. <laughs> Bill Weld is an old school, you know, Eisenhower Republican. Brahmin yeah. Republican. Right, right. <laughs> so, and that makes them very unhappy. They don't want to vote for that. They, they had a chance with Romney. They, they don't like that. They want, so Joe Walsh is racist and Goldilocks. He's just the right amount of racist. Um, he is a full-blown crackpot, right-wing, failed one-term congressman who is now a radio host who specializes, as hundreds of other idiots like him do, uh, with pointing and shouting and screaming about uh, the government and freedom and liberals and shit like that. That's all he does. He's, he's one of those people. And there's no reason in the world why anyone a normal citizen would know who this person is. Uh, But he decided, here's what I'll do. I'll run to the right of Donald Trump. Uh, And, and that's the thing. There's, there's never a bad path for Republicans, (laughs) you know? I mean, and this was a guy who was pro Trump. This is a guy who said, basically, if Hillary, if Trump loses, grab your muskets. Yeah. Literally said that. He did say that. He did say that. Now, everything about Joe Walsh is uh, Donald Trump except for the hair. Um, his, his views are equally despicable. His record is awful. He's, like I said, a failed one-term congressman from the suburbs of Chicago. And there is no reason in the world in any healthy universe why this guy should be anywhere near a microphone. But we don't live in that universe, do we? We live in this universe. And now he's, you know, now he's a, a bold never-Trumper. Um, so what happens when... Um, this guy, and I mentioned a bunch of a bunch of names in my post, which you may or may not be familiar with. Lar Daly. Lar Daly used to run for president all the time, <laughs> and mayor all the time. It was a, it was a stunt candidacy, or uh-huh. Lyndon Larouche, or Pat Paulson. Lyndon Larouche, yeah, yeah, that's the one I think of. Yeah. Uh, Pat Paulson used to run for president all the time. Right, but right. Everyone knew this was a joke. Everyone knew these people weren't serious. That that they were, you know, they were they were they were serious in their own head, except for Pat Paulson. But this, these were jokes. These were stunts. These were, you know, this was the way, way, way off the midway freak show of the American political circus. And you'd go over there and grab a story or two because it was funny to watch them, you know, fling poo at each other or whatever. But nobody ever took it seriously because that's just insane. Real politics place, takes place over here at the grown-up table. But we've left that universe far behind. So immediately when Joe Walsh, who is completely unqualified to be anything – much less on the radio or in politics, certainly not running for president. And mind you, he's running to just remove a few points, just a few, a fraction of a percent from, from Donald Trump. 
who will, of course, during the primaries, all of whom will go back to him in the general election. There's no place yeah. else for them yeah. to go. So the, right. the whole thing is a never Trumper. He's like he saw the grift, the the pot of gold that never Trumpers enjoy. Once they start, oh, you, you bash, I can make money bashing Trump. Well, I'll do that now for a while. Right, right. And so immediately he's booked on CNN. And then he's booked on MSNBC a couple of times. And then he was given a seat at ABC's This Week um, on Sunday morning, the, the, you know, the prestigious Sunday morning talk shows. Uh, then he, uh, uh, the Chicago Tribune did a full page of him and then another half page. Our, our local paper, the State Journal, registered a half page story on him. The New York Times gave him his own guest column. Let that sink in for a minute. The New York Times gave Joe Walsh his own guest column to talk about the need to challenge Donald Trump from the right. Then the New York Times dispatched Maggie Haberman to talk to Bill Kristol about what a good idea this was. <laughs> and so there's a second New York Times column about Joe Walsh. Then Peter Weiner, who was a uh, unreconstructed right-wing uh, Bush-era uh, evangelical douchebag who has his own column in the New York Times because that's the law, wrote his column about the Joe Walsh challenge. You know, it's a challenge to us real decent conservatives to take on people like this. So he got all the coverage he could ever want just by saying, yeah, I'm going to run for president now. But I think you're missing one part of the, of the equation. Which is? Which is taxes. The fact that Joe Walsh is running to the right of Trump and running on an anti-deficit platform. Sure, sure. I mean, I, I have no idea whether Joe Walsh even has the signatures to get on the ballot in any primaries. I know uh, Bill Weld has been working on getting, right. and he has a path to defeating Donald Trump that includes California, that includes, you know, being right. on the ballot in places he like he's he plan, legitimately exactly. attempting to get votes. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know from Joe Walsh, whether he's doing that or not. He hasn't indicated that. Uh, he doesn't seem to have any ground game apart from no. a YouTube video. No. And his, and his radio show. And, and a constant stream now of national attention, including New York times, but the New York times is catering. And you've always said this to mm -hmm. Wealthy, white, male, investor class, New Yorkers who are righteously pissed at Donald Trump. Yep. You know, they're Jeb Bush Republicans or they're Romney Republicans or whatever kind of, you know, Republican they they are, right? They they would have been happy with anyone but Trump mm -hmm. uh, and and possibly Ted Cruz, yeah. um, <laughs> who were the last two standing. Right. But they got screwed by this tax cut they did. program they did. because their state taxes are high and they can't deduct them anymore. So they need somewhere to go. And they're not going to vote for Elizabeth Warren, God forbid. No, because socialism. Or Bernie Sanders, God socialism. forbid, because that's social, social, socialism. And right. you're going to tax wealth. What? Or, what? Joe, or Joe Biden, because socialism. They're not voting for anybody <laughs> on, the, on any of the Democratic <laughs> Party because of, oh, my God, socialism. My taxes will go up again. Right. Oh, you know, no, and no. I'll and I still won't be able to write off my state taxes. Right. And it'll be, you know, and and <laughs> I'm going to tell you something personal drift glass oh really Ooh, you, okay. i know you already know bow, chicky, bow, i used bow. to be i used to be married to someone oh. who said i better look at my portfolio and see how i'm gonna vote this time yes that's literally the I only mean, criteria literally, for, yeah. yeah yeah like depends on who's gonna do better for me because i'm number one mm -hmm. and and believe me i'm i'm absolutely sure that the the new york times editorial board thinks about that in the back of their minds. Mm -hmm. The people that are, are reading and caring and funding our advertisers and affecting our bottom line. Not ours, because we don't have any advertisers. Yeah. And our bottom no, line I'm is I'm talking about the New York Times yes. bottom line. Yes. You know, who do we care about? Whose opinions do we care about? Right. Who who are our social circle? And that's the people that are furious at uh Republican who voted for the tax cut because mm -hmm. it affected their bottom line. If you'd like to know who the New York Times cares about, you go to the top floor of the New York Times building and look in any direction. 
Yeah. And, and wherever <laughs> your sight line lands. Straight ahead. That right? is who so they care about. The pen- houses, right? <laughs> Anyone beyond the horizon, below, they don't give, they don't give the a shit about. Right. Yes, right. They don't give a shit about. That is not That is not their audience. That is not their concern. They like right. to be the gray lady. They like to be the newspaper record. They don't have record. to look down. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is all, literally all they care about. You and I don't even exist, except no, when I it know. comes to dispatching uh, uh, anthropological uh, uh, specialists to come to the Midwest, to come out to the But state. they don't talk They're, to us. No, no, no. <laughs> they they aren't in. interested in what Democrats in the Midwest no, think. No, no. They, they go down to DJ Cafe and talk to the Trump <laughs> yeah. voters and find right, out what right. do they really think. Because David right. Brooks said you all sit around stroking your beards reading Reinhold Niebuhr. Is this true? And they go, Niebuhr, is that like a beer? Because beer's good, and we drink that at at, at uh, Floyd's Thirst Parlor, but I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. No, we like Donald Trump because we're racist. Oh, I'm sorry. No, what I meant to say was we love Donald Trump because of our, checks notes, economic anxiety. Right. Yeah. I'm going to give you three minutes to talk about, we've already talked about Mark Halpern. We have. So- Matthew Dowd and Bill Crystal and David Brooks. You got one minute each. Not Bill. Not, oh, Bill Crystal. Well, Bill yeah. Crystal just did a, a perfect thing this week, and he 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 went on the Twitter because it's bizarre world. Uh, he went on Twitter to tell Donald Trump that one day, many years from now, when history looks back on this, now I'm quoting him: "Age of Trump." Bill Crystal hopes that a big part of Bill Crystal's legacy will be quote helping ensure that the age lasts only one term. And that it's looked back on with regret and disgust. And yeah, Bill, uh, Bill, Bill Crystal's legacy is going to be Sarah Palin. Bill Crystal had better pray to whatever bloodthirsty <laughs> God he prays to that they stop looking at around 2015. <laughs> because if they go yep. back any further than that, they're going to find that Bill Crystal is the worst scumbag in Seriously. America. The Iraq War and Sarah Palin. That's it. <laughs> Douchebag, wrong about everything, fuckface. In this we have country, to have the will to yes. win. Who's got? Yes, right. Who's got his job because his daddy was Irving Crystal and got his son-in-law a job because it, that was right. his son-in-law. He's just the worst across the board. But as long as we we nip history off around 2015 <laughs> or 2016, then we love him. And this is what drives me okay, mad. But then yeah. you also have to cut off history and start history in 2019. Yes, when Matthew Dowd says. I am going to repeat this one more time. The goal of the press should be truth, not balance. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> and that that is so. Everything from look, before that he said he tweeted that has got to go. Right, and and it does. It goes out because it, it's it's very simple. If you would like a per, and I mean this literally. If you would like a personal thank you for mm-hmm. Matthew Dowd. Go flatter him about his take on how both sides do it is an illegitimate form of journalism, and we should just seek the truth. Wow. He will thank you personally. I, I watched him do it today. He was thank God I'm blocked, but I have my ways. You know, I have my secret mm-hmm. ways. I know. <laughs> um, but if you would like to be blocked by Matthew Dowd, go remind him of what he was up to during the 2016 election when he and Ron exactly Fortier. Exactly the would time he, when Bill Crystal wants you to yes, stop history. Stop history. Don't talk about. Don't talk about then. And, and Matthew Dowd doesn't want you to talk about it either because Matthew Dowd and Ron Fortier were the undisputed Martin and Lewis. Abbott and Costello, kings, <laughs> fucking kings of both sides do it journalism. Every single time Donald Trump shit the bed, they'd say, yeah, but Hillary's emails. Yeah, but both sides do it. Yeah, it's the corrupt duopoly. And people like me were saying, "You do you know what you are doing to journalism? Do you know you, you are inviting this idiot into the White House? Every time a Republican does something shitty, you blame both sides and you're creating apathy. You're, you're you're destroying any sort of credibility your profession ever has, which is ever had, which is minimal, and you are enabling the worst people in this country. And for that, Matthew Dowd blocked me and called my readers stupid. I mean, literally went on Twitter and called my readers idiots. David Brooks forgot all what all about what he said during the women's march, and now uh, people are marching in Hong Kong for democracy and fairness, yeah. and he's all for that apparently. Well, he's he managed to do the sort of perfect David Brooks thing which is write a column in which um, he completely forgets mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what he wrote two years ago. Right. Uh, he, he, he praised the Hong Kong protesters, right? Um, they're out there. They're fighting for freedom, et cetera, et cetera. They, they're, they're all about human dignity. Uh, but you know what the problem is, really? The, the real problem here, and you just got to look for it because it's always in his columns. He literally writes nothing but this one fucking column. If you look down, look down. Oh, there it is. Um, 
The problem is the American right no longer believes in spreading democracy to foreigners, but the American left embraces a national narrative that emphasizes wow. slavery and oppression. Uh, and it's neither party, neither party is any good, Blue Gal. Neither party believes America is a vanguard of democracy or a beacon to the rest of the world. Blah, 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 blah. So David Brooks embraces protests and, mm -hmm. and sneers at the left and the right in this country, Blue Gal, because we don't do that anymore. We don't get out. We don't protest. Oh, sure, the left protests. But we don't. But we protest based on slavery and oppression. And why aren't we taken to the streets, Blue Gal? Huh? And then you flip back David Brooks two years to the Women's March, and he was just as condescending and shitty was. as you could possibly be. He didn't understand. They seemed, they seemed to be out there for a whole bunch of reasons, and a lot of signs use the word pussy, which confuses me, and I don't understand it, but it seems kind of indulgent and silly, and you know how women are. It's very indulgent. He really, he really patronized all of the women out there with their hats on because this really makes no sense that they're all out there protesting a president who hasn't served yeah. yet. Why are and, they doing and it? And so yeah. he, he just ignored what he himself wrote a couple of years ago, turned the Hong Kong protests into one more chance to say both sides are bad. And then Brett Stevens said, David, hold my fucking beer because I, I got one yep. coming. I, I can feel one coming down my colon. It's going to be a big one. It's going to shit all. I'm going to control the Internet for two days, David. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to yell at a guy for calling me a bed bug on Twitter. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> all right. News Roundup. Trump at the G7 was every bit the international embarrassment everyone assumed he would be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the EPA under Donald Trump pl uh, plans to roll back regulation on methane emissions, which are a major contributor to climate change. The Trump administration started denying applications for immigrant families for permission to extend their stay in the U.S. for medical care not available in their home countries. Translation, they're kicking out sick children. Sick children. Mm-hmm. Because they were, they really were, how can we even be more cruel and sadistic? Hey, I have an idea. Let's deport sick children in the middle of their treatment. Uh, Donald Trump uh, attacked Puerto Rico as it got ready for Hurricane Dorian. He called the island, quote, one of the most corrupt places on earth other than the White House. And San Juan Mayor uh, Carmen Julian Cruz, incompetent. And then Donald Trump proclaimed himself, quote, the best thing that has ever happened to Puerto Rico. He's just trolling at that point. Well, he's losing his mind, and yeah. he doesn't want people yeah. to talk about the G7 disaster, so right. he's so just throwing not, shit at the wall. He's going to inflame people but that way, yeah. Right. Trump complained that Fox News isn't working for us anymore because the network is not sufficiently loyal to him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Justice Department Inspector General found that James Comey violated FBI policies for sharing memos that detailed his interactions with Donald Trump. Uh they thought he broke the law, but he won't be charged, which if it sounds familiar, it should. <laughs> there were no phone calls. Donald Trump claimed at the G7 that China called last night to resume trade talks because they have been hurt very badly by the trade war. This never happened. Trump aides also admitted that he lied about the high level trade talks with Chinese officials in order to boost the markets. Yeah, yeah. And everyone knows it. Uh, remember Kaylee McEnany? We ever wonder what she's up to? I, I have not because I don't really care about her. I wish she would just fall into the sun. But she was invited back on CNN to lie about Donald Trump for about 20 minutes. She said, no, I don't think the president has lied and then accused the news networks of lying to the American people. She also insisted there was no Russian interference in the 2016 election. And they so put she her got on... her paycheck from the RNC. That's what yeah. happened. Yeah, yeah. She, she works for the GOP.com. That's what mm -hmm. she does. She does. Children born to some U.S. military members and government employees working overseas will no longer automatically be considered United States citizens if they were born overseas. Yeah. As someone tweeted today, all those people that think that taking a knee is disrespecting the troops. Again, Trump just said, hold my beer. Uh, Donald Trump is planning to open Alaska's 16.7 million acre Tongass National Forest to logging, mining, and oil drilling. The Tongass National Forest contains more than half of the world's largest intact temperate rainforest. The Trump administration is pulling $155 million from FEMA's Disaster Relief Fund to temporarily pay for court hearing locations for asylum seekers along the southern border who have been forced to wait in Mexico. Remember Attorney General William Barr, who's just a terrible person at every level? This was the week that he announced that he's going to rent Donald Trump's D.C. hotel for a 200-person holiday party in December. Uh, this uh, this will likely earn the Trump's hotel 
$30,000 in revenue from Trump's own personal lawyer. And by the way, he's also the attorney general. Trump blamed radical left Democrats for spreading a false and nasty rumor about a bed bug infestation at the Trump National Doral Miami Golf Resort, where he wants to hold the G7 next year. Yeah, and where he has already settled with people over there being attacked by bed bugs, and there's photographic proof of it, but that doesn't really change Republicans' minds anymore, does it? Uh, Donald Trump says he refuses to jeopardize the wealth of the U.S. over climate dreams and windmills after skipping a G7 session on climate change. Farmers are getting pissed at Trump's trade war with China. We're not starting to do great again, said the president of the Minnesota Corn Growers Association. Things are going downhill and downhill quickly. Yeah, but are you going to vote against him? Probably not. You know, throw that throw your support behind Joe Walsh. Let's see how that goes. Um, Donald Trump was the only world leader to skip a session devoted to climate change at the G7 summit, citing scheduled meetings with Germany and India. German Chancellor Angela Merkel and India Prime Minister uh, Narada Modi, however, both attended the climate change meeting and were right there visible in pictures next to Donald Trump's empty chair. When asked whether he had attended the climate session, Trump said, uh, we're having it in a little while. No, you just missed it. The Trump hotels and resorts could save millions of dollars on outstanding loans if the Federal Reserve lowered interest rates as Trump has demanded. For every quarter point reduction, Trump could save as much as $850,000 in annual interest rate payments. Uh, The attorneys general for 19 states and the District of Columbia have sued the Trump administration to block a new rule to indefinitely detain migrant families who cross the border illegally. Since January 2017, Trump's net approval rating has dropped in every key battleground state. That's wonderful news. Uh, Donald Trump has repeatedly suggested that dropping nuclear bombs on hurricanes to stop them from hitting the U.S. during meetings with senior Homeland Security and national security officials. Why don't we nuke them? A source in the room said that, quote, you could hear a gnat fart in that meeting. People were astonished. After the meeting ended, we thought, what the fuck? What do we do with this? Donald Trump later denied the report, tweeting in third person, as he does because he's insane, President Trump never said this and called the story ridiculous. Diane Foley, the woman Trump appointed to oversee the Title X contraception program, believes condoms are too complicated to use and that Mm -hmm. teaching about them is sexual harassment. Remember that Donald Trump has canceled his trip to Denmark after the Danish prime minister made it clear that Greenland was not for sale. Donald Trump said that Denmark was a very special country with incredible people because everyone's special and incredible, but announced that he had decided to postpone the planned state visit based on prime minister Mette Fredriksen's comments that she would have no interest in discussing the purchase of Greenland. Trump accused her of making nasty comments and that she blew me off and that made not a nice statement about his interest in purchasing Greenland. Carla Sands, Donald Trump's ambassador to Denmark, is a conspiracy-minded, climate-change-denying former actress turned private chiropractor turned GOP megadonor because we are living in the greatest novel Kurt Vonnegut never wrote. Trump claimed without evidence. You could just... Stop there. Yeah. <laughs> lied. I think the word is lied. Lied. Yeah. That Google, quote unquote, manipulated votes in the 2016 election after a Fox big business segment on the subject aired. Meanwhile, Ellen Weintraub, the chairwoman of the Federal Election Commission, called Trump's repeated rants about voter fraud in the 2016 election unsubstantiated and, quote, damaging to our democracy because they, quote, undermine people's faith in the election system. Mm hmm. And finally, Donald Trump lied and said that he has the authority to make decisions about which TV networks can host presidential debates during the general election. He's crazy. He's crazy. And his and his and his followers, the Republican base are worse. They're worse than he is. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet kitties are Chester and Dexter, and they are beautiful orange kitties who, unlike the orange menace, Never manipulate the stock market with China (laughs) lies. And you'd better believe that Chester and Dexter eat freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you buy Pet Store Perfection or Dollar Store Dreck, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the only cat food they eat is freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. 
You can visit Chester and Dexter at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job and a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties want to wish the godmother of science fiction, Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley, a happy 222nd birthday. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018.